Hallelujah. Father, thank you for your power and your presence. Thank you for letting us know whose program it is, whose service it is. And God, we thank you. And we pray, God, that you will have your way in this place. Somebody's soul is saved. Somebody's life is changed. We thank you right now in advance of what you're going to do. Move as only you know how. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Every heart said, Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to look at verse 22. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to talk today about the water walkers. The water walkers. One of the things that all of us have to know in this Christian journey, our relationship with Jesus Christ, that every day we should develop, we should mature. Every round should take us into different dimensions in our relationship with Jesus Christ. You have to understand that every day we are confronted with things that we may not want to confront, but the truth is you have to be spiritual enough to discern that everything that comes in your life that may be bad may not be the devil. Sometimes God allows things to come in your life in order that the greatness inside of you might develop. Without these experiences, this stuff would lie dormant in your life. Whether or not you know it, there is greatness inside of you. Yourself say, that's greatness in me. And you must understand that God allows these challenges to come in your life that that thing in you might come to fruition. And there's a group of people in this place today, you know without a shadow of a doubt that since you were a child, you were different. You know that God has always had something different on your life. You never felt comfortable in certain crowds. You never felt comfortable in the status quo. You knew that God had something special going on in your life. And it's interesting because the moment you declare that you know that you are different on a very personal level, you will soon have a public platform to declare it. The truth is, is that in our text today, Jesus constrained or he made his disciples get into a ship and Jesus left them alone to go across the sea. The Bible declares that Jesus goes up into a mountain apart from them to pray. And the Bible says a storm comes. We know Jesus sends the storm because he is the weather man. Don't pay any attention to what the meteorologist says. Trust me, he's the weather man. And the truth is he can make it storm when the meteorologist says it's going to be sunny. The truth is he's in control and the Bible declares that a storm came and Jesus went walking to them on the water somebody say water walker Jesus came walking to them and it is Peter once the disciples discovered that Jesus was not a ghost Jesus says it is I it is Peter with all of his issues with his colorful personal biography it is Peter who declares that I want to step out of the boat and I want to do something people say cannot be done I dare walk on the water because Jesus is walking on the water I've come to declare to your life today that regardless of your issues regardless of your mistakes that you yet have the potential to do something 
people say cannot be done these are the water walkers these are people who are tired of the status quo these are people who know that God has something bigger and better for your life water walkers never feel comfortable being boxed in being put in situations where you cannot expand because you recognize that this thing inside of you is bigger than the situation that's trying to control you look at your neighbor tell him you're sitting next to a water walker and I've come to tell somebody today that I'm not telling you something new I am simply confirming to you what's been in your spirit for a long time to simply tell you that you're not crazy for thinking like you think because the truth of the matter is there's some other folk in this place that's been thinking like you think too we believe we can do what folks say we can't do we believe we can have what folks say we can't have look at somebody tell them I'm a water walker And there are some great things that God wants to do in your life, water walker. There are some awesome things that God wants to do in your life. And I want you to understand this because as we look at this text, the Bible says that Jesus was walking on the water. And Peter was in the boat with all the other disciples. They were in a ship. And Peter says, Lord, I want to come. If that's you, let me come. And Jesus says one word. He says, come and Peter steps out of the boat and I want you to know that if you're going to be a water walker if you're going to be different you're going to have to learn how to risk the familiar my God I just said something but I think you missed it look at your neighbor and say you got to risk the familiar you see you got to get this the first indication that you are willing to walk on water is your ability to literally risk what you are comfortable with Peter was perfectly fine on the ship the ship represents that place of comfort but Peter says Lord bid me to come and the Lord said if you want to come Peter come on he asked Jesus I want to do what you do and Jesus in other words I want to step out of my comfort zone but let me break this down because there was a storm on the sea somebody say there's a storm going on your Bible says that the winds are contrary. Your Bible says that a storm is taking place. And the safest place for a person like Peter, who is a fisherman, he knows is on the ship. Because if you're in water and you're in a storm, the safest place to be is on the ship. But he knows that the ship represents comfort. And he was willing to step away from comfort to be where God would have him to be. Whether or not you know it, the reason why some people never reach the next level never reach where God is trying to take you because you are too afraid to step outside of your comfort zone you are too satisfied with the familiar can I tell you something there's some people that would rather stay on the ship without Jesus than to be off the ship with Jesus I'm trying to help somebody I said you'd rather stay on the ship without Jesus than to be off the ship with Jesus but I'm here to tell you I don't care what ship you on if Jesus ain't on it I don't care if it's a relationship I don't care if it's a friendship I don't care if it's a fellowship it's gonna be a hardship if Jesus ain't on it the truth is you'd be surprised at how many people how many people miss their blessing because you're afraid to risk the familiar I'm talking to somebody right now you'd be surprised how many people never join the church where they're being fed they just visit regularly. And you want to know why they never join the church where they're being fed? Because they are afraid to step out of the comfort zone. Because of denominationalism. I've been this all my life. I've been Baptist all my life. I've been Methodist all my life. I've been Pentecostal all my life. I've been apostolic all my life. Can I tell you something? When you get to help, there ain't going to be no denomination. Surprise! It won't be no Baptist. won't be no Church of Christ. won't be no Methodist. But it'll all be the saints of God. And I guarantee you, if you die and go to hell you're gonna see Baptist there Methodist there Kojic there apostolic there can I preach like I want up in this place today somebody else you letting the ship of comfort keep you from where God wants you to be because of your color you well you know nobody I would join that church but I mean nobody looks like me nobody looks like me can I tell you something ain't nobody caught up on that but you look at your neighbor say that when I look at you all I see is red tell them all I see is the blood I don't see black and white I don't see Asian Hispanic but I see the blood and we got to realize you will miss your blessing because of stuff you got in your head 
Some people never start the business because you are so comfortable where you are. Let me tell you something. That's why when this greatness is inside of you, you got to get away from people with boat mentality. People with boat mentality don't think big enough. They don't think broad enough. And you got to be willing to walk away from places of comfort because those people will keep you in the boat and they'll sit back and watch your dreams pass you by. If you are willing to walk on water, you got to be willing to step away from the crowd. All the disciples on the ship. Yet it was Peter who chose to be different. I'd rather be with Christ than be with the crowd any day. And you got to get this. When you step out, you got to be willing to step out by yourself. I say when you step out, you got to be willing to step out by yourself. You see, you got to understand, let them talk about you. Let them call you crazy. But they don't know what you after. Look at your neighbor, tell them if you knew what I was after. You'd understand why I'm out here by myself. Man, I got to keep walking when they talk about me. I got to walk when they roll their eyes at me. I've come to speak into somebody's life because you think you're losing your mind because ain't nobody giving you a high five. Ain't nobody embracing you. But I've come to tell you, keep on walking you just gotta keep on walking until you walk like Paul forgetting those things which are behind me I press forth the mark of the pride listen 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 gotta walk now here it is once I once I risk the familiar I, I Peter Peter says Lord if it's you I'm coming Jesus says come on Peter, your Bible says, and Peter stepped out of the boat. Peter had radical faith. You see, you got to understand, faith always needs a corresponding action. It's one thing to say you got faith, but faith doesn't mean anything if it doesn't have a corresponding action. Faith without works is dead. You can talk about and talk about what you're going to do and what you're going to do, but you need a corresponding action. See, let me show you something, and you got to get this. The fact that you say you're going to do a thing is one thing. But what do you do when you have the opportunity to do what you said you were going to do? See, you don't just need plain old, ordinary, plain Jane faith. You need faith to confront the challenge. What's the challenge, pastor? It's clear. The Bible said... There was a storm was going on. The winds were contrary. Peter stepped out of a boat in the middle of a storm. Conditions were not favorable, but he stepped out. Conditions were not favorable, but he stepped out. I'm talking to somebody right now. You're in the middle of a storm. Everything that can go wrong is going wrong in your life. I know conditions are not favorable. You say, I would start the business, but conditions are not favorable. I don't have the money. I would. I would go back to school, but I don't have the money nor the support. Conditions are not favorable. God told me to tell you, stop worrying about the storm because you will never get what God has for your life until that thing inside of you gets so big that it eclipses the storms in your life. You got to get to a point that regardless of your reality you looking at your possibility you ain't worried about what's wrong with it you just stand with stepping out on faith trusting God listen 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 that thing inside of you has to get so big that regardless of the storm you will still commit and if nothing but for this brief moment in the text Peter commits himself to the sea and steps out on the water. Peter is walking on the water. This is where we get the term, get your feet wet. You've been talking about what you want to do. We're tired of hearing about it. Get your feet wet. Look at somebody next to you, tell them, get your feet wet. We're tired of you showing us catalogs about graduate schools. Would you please just go on and get your feet wet? We're so tired of hearing about your business plan. You've been showing us that for 10 years now. Get your feet 
we, we're so tired of hearing about how you're going to get a house and how you, would you please just go on and apply for the house and get your feet. Nobody had ever walked on water before. Nowhere in the scripture had anybody walked on water. Jonah got thrown off a ship and he went under and a whale caught him. Nobody had ever done this before. Nobody's ever opened up a business like this before. Nobody's ever had a dream like you got before. Nobody's ever had a vision like you got before. Nobody's ever been to college in your family but you. Nobody's ever been debt free in your family but you. Nobody's ever been married over 20 years in your family but you. But just because nobody else has ever done it, don't mean God hasn't raised you up to be the first to do it. Look at your neighbor and say, I've been born for this moment. Tell him I was born for this moment. Listen. In the moment, <laughs> Peter steps off. Listen. One moment, He's on the ship. The next moment, he's out in the middle of the sea. Just that quick. This is what you got to know about water walkers. You better be careful when you mess around with water walkers. Water walkers are progressive. You look up one moment, they still right here. The next moment, they didn't move on up the... I'm trying to help somebody. And can I tell you what, what's going through a water walker's mind? I'm too far out here to go back and I'm too close to miss what God has for my life look at your neighbor tell him come hell or high water tell him I ain't going back I'm too far out here I'm too close to miss what God has for my life you can talk about me you can make fun of me you can laugh at me but I'm not gonna miss what God has for my life listen Water walkers have radical faith. And water walkers know how to recover from their mistakes. Water walkers know how to recover from their mistakes because it's important to know that there is a lesson in every mistake. I said there is a lesson in every mistake. And just because you have radical faith and you are a water walker, it doesn't mean that you are not going to make mistakes. Even the best of us. I don't care how anointed you are. I don't care if you got a Bible as big as a ghetto blaster. I don't care if you speak in tongue. I don't care if you got a big cross around your neck. You are not exempt from making mistakes. It's been said that the only person who failed was the person who tried. But what brings glory to God is when you don't wallow in your failures, but when you get yourself up and you declare that I'm going to try again. And your Bible declares, y'all, watch this, that for a moment, Peter took his eyes off Jesus just for a moment. I used to be hard on Peter, I ain't gonna lie. I used to preach sermons about shame on Peter, taking his eyes off Jesus until I realized that even the best of us trying to do God's will, that there'll be a storm that'll come in your life that'll cause you to lose your focus for a minute. Who am I talking to you ain't got to act deep up in here like you ain't never took your eyes off Jesus but can I tell you the shouting news up in here your Bible says and Peter beginning to sink somebody missed that let me say it again your Bible said Peter beginning to sink can I tell you what the shouting news is is that the fact that Peter did not go under look at your neighbor tell him I began to sink but God didn't let me go under Somebody ought to give him glory right there that it looked like I should have been under by now But God didn't let me go under I had financial trouble, but I didn't go under I had sickness in my body, but I didn't go under Do I have a witness in this place if the devil had his way? I would have gone under a long time ago But your Bible said I'm beginning to sink that a water walker named Peter knew who to call on That's the thing about a water walker when we get in trouble we know who to call on because Peter with three little words Peter uttered a prayer Lord save me 
Now can I tell you something that's awesome about that prayer? Is that notice it was just three little words. Look at your neighbor, tell them just three words. Got God's attention. You know it's not the length of your prayer. But it's the strength of your prayer. Let me say it again. It's not the length of your prayer, but it's the strength of your prayer. Peter didn't have time for this evening, my heavenly father. Once more again, this is your humble child. Thank you for my last night lying down and thinking that my match is not. He didn't have time for prayer preliminary. All he had time for was, Lord, save me. That's why the hymn writer said, Jesus is on the main line. Stop talking so much and tell him what you want. Look at your neighbor, tell him if you call him I'm a witness that he'll show up and the Bible said that the Lord took Peter and took him by the right hand and lifted him up look at somebody tell him when I was sinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore sinking deeply stained within sinking to rise no more but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry and from the water lifted me and safe am I it was love that lifted me and the Bible said that Jesus and Peter went walking on the water back to the boat and I asked Peter I said Peter you called on it what are you doing now and Peter said I'm gonna cling to him because this time I'm not gonna let him go look at your neighbor tell him I don't care what comes I'm not letting him go tell him he walks with me he talks with me he tells me that I'm his own I feel the anointing in this place I feel like preaching in this place today I'm talking to somebody right now God called you a water walker and it's time for you to step out of the natural and step into the supernatural is there anybody here that knows that you can walk on water can I tell you something look at somebody next to you and tell them neighbor when I stepped out the first time they laughed at me but tell them when they see me coming back I'm coming back better I'm coming back better than before I left do I have a witness in here I may have stepped out broke but I'm coming back blessed I may have stepped out sick but coming back healed I may have stepped out depressed but I'm coming back with my right mind somebody ought to give him glory I've come to release an anointing in this house I've come to declare over every person in this place I've come to this full service to speak into your spirit to declare that today you shall step out of the ordinary and you shall walk into the extraordinary I declare over your life that everywhere you put your foot you shall declare I'm a water walker so what you can't afford the house walk on it so what you can't afford the car walk on it so what you can't get the job walk on it do a heaven and water walkers in this place i'm looking for some water walkers i'm looking for some folk that know you're different that know god's been good to you hallelujah hallelujah water walker I'm walking on stuff folks said I can't have <laughs> I'm walking on stuff folks say I can't have J just look at somebody tell them if the devil had his way tell him I wouldn't be here today I would have went under a long time ago but I'm clinging I'm wrapped up, I'm tangled up, I'm tied up, hey, hey, you're different, you've been called to something different, I want you to stand on your feet, I want you to take that neighbor by the hand. Take that neighbor, hold that hand, squeeze that hand. That's a person who's different. 
They've known it all their life. Don't you let that hand go now. Because there's so much that God wants to do. I come to declare over your life the hand that you hold and covered it right now. That every dream, every vision, every destiny, every desire in your spirit that's of God, that it shall come to pass. That if you be willing to risk the familiar, to step out of comfort zones, to realize that this is a new season in your life, everybody's not going to agree with it but when you hear the Lord say come that you'll come that you'll have the radical faith Peter didn't have a plan B he didn't ask anybody on the boat y'all got a life jacket just in case but he stepped out with radical faith say I'm gonna trust God I'm gonna trust him with all of it not some of it but all of it and even if I slip I'm not going to wallow, but I'm going to get back up and say, Lord, I'm trying. Lord, I'm trying. I'm going to keep calling on him, and I'm not going to let him go. I decree over that life now. A shift out of the ordinary into the extraordinary. I declare over your life peace of mind to know that you're not crazy. That nothing's wrong with you for thinking on the level you think on. For having in your spirit the things you have in your spirit that God has connected you with people who see like you see who understand how big this thing can get inside of you and in the midst of your storm because I know there's some storms going on in your life now conditions are not favorable I speak faith over your life to step out by faith when conditions are not favorable when you don't have the support when you don't have all the money, when you don't know how it's going to work out, I decree it over your life that you can step out right now and it be done in your life in the name of Jesus. And when the hand that you're holding now, I declare that when you release that hand, something in the spirit is going to happen in here. But that person is coming out of a boat. They're coming out of ship. They're coming out of a comfort zone. And they're going to be released into their destiny in the name of Jesus. I believe it is so. I want you to release that hand. Look at that person and just say, walk, 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 walk. You can do it. Walk. Whatever it is, walk in it. Walk in it. Somebody here today, all day long, this, this altar has been filled with people who understand what it means to walk in their destiny. And if you're here, you want to give your life to Jesus, God bless you, my sister. And you want to turn it over to the Lord. They're already coming. See, people understand there's an anointing in this house to set the captive free. And somebody here right now, you want a relationship with Jesus Christ? Maybe you're not saved. Maybe God is speaking to you about this church home. And you heard that word about getting out of the ship of comfort today he says if you want to come come now I'm waiting on you right now at this moment come come this is a season in your life but you've got to trust God that's it that's it come on come on come on somebody knows he'll do a new thing somebody knows he'll do it hallelujah and whatever ever come on that's it I want you to put your hands together as they come Hallelujah. Here they come. Come on. Whatever. Whatever. You. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. It all. It all shall be done. Come on. Come on. Says the Lord. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, who am I talking to? Water walker, come on water walker. Come on, I don't care if you're black, if you're white, you're Asian, Hispanic, I don't care if you're, what denomination you come from. I'm talking about people and God is called into a different dimension. Come on, we'll do a new thing. In you, hallelujah. 
and whatever, whatever you ask, whatever you ask for, whatever, whatever you, it all shall be done. It all shall. And listen, quickly, I want you to do this. And if you're not at this altar, I'm talking to you. If you're not at this altar, I'm talking to you. Out there, I want you to take one person by the hand, just one. And I want you to be a witness to that one person. Look them square in the eye and just say these words. Say, if you need to make a change, if you're ready to walk on water, I'll walk with you. Say, please, don't leave here on the ship you came here with. Say, today is a new season, and I'm ready to rejoice with you as you walk in it. Say, let's go now. Come on, come on, come on. Now, who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Come on, who am I talking to? That's it. Bless you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's it. That's it. Come on. It all. Come on. That's it. Shall be done. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's it. That's it. Come on. I dare you to give God glory. I dare you to give God glory. Come on. Come on. Come on. One more time. Come on. Come on. I will. A new thing. Come on. A new thing. Come on, come on, come on. That's it. That's it. That's it. Whatever you ask. My God, I see you. 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 I see you, I see you, it all shall be, I really, I really want to let this go, but I, I feel in my spirit, and I, I you know, I, I just feel in my spirit that somebody's wrestling, and I'm just, I'm just going to give two minutes, and I promise you I'm going to be through, but I need you to know that you cannot be satisfied with average. That ain't nothing but being on top of the bottom. God has so much. I don't know who this is for. I don't know who this is for, but Peter was the least likely to step out. I mean, with all his issues and all his stuff, but it was Peter who dared to be different. And all your life you've known that something's awesome has been in your life, but you are allowing your issues to keep you from experiencing the next dimension. God can take your issues and use them as a testimony. You ain't got to worry about trying to have it all together. You gotta just come and let the Lord work with you day by day. But I'm here to tell you, it don't take much to be on the ship. But I'm tired of boat mentality. I'm tired. You, you, you just got, you're too limited on the boat. The sea is vast and opportunities in the sea, but the boat is limited. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to, but these two minutes right here are for you. And you know without a doubt in your mind, you may say, Pastor, I'm just visiting my first time. The Bible said the day you hear his voice, harder not your heart. My brother, stop wrestling. My sister, stop wrestling. There is something that God spoke into your spirit today. Receive it. He says, out of all your prayers, out of all the stuff you've been on your face about, Jesus says one word, come. Here it is. Now, where are you? Where are you? Water walker? Water walker, will you stay on the boat? Or will you come? Church, are you praying? God bless you. I see you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. One word, come. Lord, I want my family to be come. Lord, I want my business come. I want my career to be come. That's all he's saying. It's one word to you. Come. That's it. Bless you. Come on. 
Lord, I want to be spiritually this. He says, come, 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 come. Oh, thank God for this young man. Come on, that's it. That's it. Make your way, man. That's it. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Come. One minute. One minute. Come. That's it. Come. Come. Come on. Hallelujah. Come. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Come. Get your feet wet. 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 Get your feet. Come. I see you. Come on. That's it. I see you. Come. 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 Get your feet wet. Come. Come. God says, I heard your prayer. I know what you're after. But you got to get out of the boat. Come. Come. Simple. Come. 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 Hallelujah. Anybody believe that it is? Anybody can sense that in your life? It's a new season. Hallelujah. Put those blessed hands together and help me thank God. I want to thank God for each of you at this altar. I celebrate what God is doing in your life and I just welcome you to this place. You know, I, I, it's so important all day long. People have responded to this word because you've known something awesome has been in your life. Something great, something different than the norm. And that's the kind of church God has called me to pastor. People who are just extraordinary. Who don't like being boxed in, but who want their wings to expand. Thank God for you. Welcome home. I said, welcome home. Yeah. That, that's what I want you to know. Welcome home. Hallelujah. In just a moment, they're going to share with you to your right, to your left, to my right. Mount Zion, help me thank God for all of these. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Blessings. Today, as we prepare to worship God in our giving, Let's get out of the boat. It blocks our blessings. There's a ship of stewardship that you step out of and you walk on the vast waters of blessings in your life. We are tithing church and we're, we're proud of it because we stand on the principles of God's word. And today as you give in your tithe, I pray the blessings of God on your life. First time tithers, I thank God for you because as you give, watch how God turns around and blesses you. I'm telling you right now, you got to get that curse out of your house. I don't care how much money you make, you have a hole in your pocket until you get in right standing with God. As you give in your offering today, please know that your seed offering is a blessing unto the Lord. It is a gift that you say, Lord, I thank you as I stretch, as I step out. I'm a water walker. 